Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to Gloomhaven. What did we do yesterday? I don't know. We finished a quest. Yes, it was a successful quest. Where did we go? I mean, it should be over here, right? I think. Oh, Crypt of the Damned. Yes, we went there. Right. <clears throat> Why are there exclamation points on those? I don't know. So I don't totally like know what all these are, you know, what direction these are supposed to be taking me. Yeah, so this is like, okay, go, these, some cultists said, hey, help us out, defeat some other cultists. So we could do that. Um. And I don't know what this one was. Destroy the undead that the cultists discovered here. Unnamed location? What does that even mean? What? Unnamed location. These are... But it, it's a named location, right? It's... This is the ruinous crypt. This is the decaying crypt. What do you mean, unnamed location? Oh, like, I see. This is in Corpsewood, and this is just, like, in the middle of nowhere, is what they're saying? Yes, I see. Not sure why that matters. Um, well, let's, let's try destroying the undead that the cultists discovered here. I don't remember if this is an important thing. If, if, rather, if I've done this one. Or if it's, like, is it the opposite of dis defeating the other cultists? Because in my other game, I did this. And that was fine. I don't really remember doing this one, but maybe I have. I don't know. Is there any shopping we're supposed to do here? You look like you could use a stamina potion. Everybody always likes stamina potions. You could use another hand item, but I said I'm waiting until there's something better available at the next prosperity level. Oh, equip that, yes, of course. And, I mean, I guess, sure, you could take a stamina potion as well. They're great. Just everybody should have one. Um, and you, right. I'm waiting for better boots to be on sale or new boots. I mean, I don't know. Winged boots would be okay. Boots of Striding would also be okay. Why wasn't I buying one of these? I don't know. I think Boots of Striding would be pretty reasonable. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why I haven't bought these yet. Well, past me must have been wrong. Future me, or current me, with really no thought at all, surely has the better approach. Relaxing for the evening of the Sleeping Lion, a shifty-looking man approaches you, hand outstretched. In it are a pair of pale dice with crude markings scratched on them. Could stand to liven things up. Care for some dice? No. I don't, I don't want to mess with my reputation. No, oh, we get more. You get all the excitement you need fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe against vicious monsters. In combat, what matters most is planning and tactics. Much more interesting than random dice. Yes, very funny. The game doesn't ship with any dice, get it? It just has, like, a thousand decks of cards. Uh, so we were going to do this one. And at some point, I... Oh, hang on. Equip this. I could, like, swap out which characters I have, and at some point I will... But, I don't know, for now I just want to, like, stick with the three guys I suck at. <laughs> um, I guess. What is his quest? Side scenarios, right. And you want a bunch of gold? Yes. I mean, there's a couple of side scenarios here, right? Or maybe just one? Like, yeah, Temple of the Eclipse, there's one we could do. And the Magma Pit we tried and failed. And those are the only two we know about. So we have to find more of them. But anyway, for now, I'm just going to head into the crypt. Yes. It's just a big pile of undead. Nothing else. No cultists. Or no, was one of those a wind spirit? Wind demon? No, it was a living spirit. 
A rustling in a thicket stops you in your tracks. A defensive stance. You're hiding. A tiny ball of fur with short, stubby legs leaps out at you. It barks twice at you in an ineffectual, high-pitched tone, then wags its tail. Huh. I mean... This is highly suspicious, but I'm going to say let's take it home. Okay. So this is just for the current scenario, surely, right? But the reputation is permanent. No, it's actually... Really? That's wild. Okay. Maybe? What is life without a little bit of intrigue? The cultists have clearly marked this crypt as a spot of trouble for them. Perhaps clearing the place out will put you in their good graces. Or maybe you're just hoping to find a big stash of treasure, untouched by the looter's hands. Once you arrive, the smell makes you regret your decision more than anything else. It's not the fact you've had it up to here with exploring old decrepit ruins. It's not the undead horrors shambling and moaning in the shadows. It's the smell. The smell of death and soullessness and rotting flesh. I think I have done this quest. I remember this little bit of dialogue here. So this was... Was this actually a permanent change to your modifier deck? It looks like it. That, that kind of sucks a lot. I mean, reputation is one thing. I don't know if I would... make that choice on purpose, but oh well. I didn't make it on purpose. Um, gained very little experience. I mean, we could try. This seems hard? I mean, we have like net shooter and stuff. We could maybe do it. What's... I could maybe cut some stuff out of my deck that adds experience. Yeah, I think I'll try this for now. Have low health or have lots of health? Well... I mean... It's sort of easier to get back to max, I think. Because we have the Tinkerer. And you can't always afford to just stand around and let a monster hit you because you might be out of cards to just stall with. Uh, yeah, Blink is good at exploring. Um, so we do want to see if there's a way we can put in, like, cards appropriate to the, this battle goal. Uh, you know, I think Volatile Concoction might just be good here. Like... We have a couple ways to get enemies to walk into traps. This is a reusable trap. And I've been carrying Proximity Mine basically just because it's a big move. I don't really want it for the trap. But the bottom half of this is kind of fine too, right? Harmless Contraption's top half we don't want to use because it costs too much experience. Costs. Uh, normally that's a gain, but in this mission we're thinking of it as a cost. Um, but the bottom half, of, you know, the heal is nice. Maybe we're cutting the flamethrower? So they don't really have any desire for the bottom half, really. The shield is nice, I just never get a chance to use this fast enough that it, that it works. Um... Reviving Shock to target two guys? That's kind of nice. Sort of. Although everyone here has a bunch of shields, except the living corpses, who you can just like leave them alone and they fall apart. So damage... Small amounts of damage to large amounts of enemies is not very good. Well... I guess shielding is pretty good against living bones because they make the multi-attacks. If I can keep the tinkerer adjacent to other allies, that might be nice to do. I, sh 
should have some way to put the Withering Claw in. Like, putting Muddle and Poison on somebody is really nice. Um... Maybe I'll take out Fearsome Blade. Okay. Let's give it a shot. How do we do time-wise, by the way? Only 10 minutes spent not doing combat. That's nice. Hang on, it changed the aspect ratio. You guys can't see the edge of the screen. <sighs> I, okay, BRB. Okay, that actually went pretty quickly, but I like made you guys go away because I can't always get it to set the resolution settings right on the first try. Like I set them to something and then it just like isn't what I set. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, it's like this loop. You only have to go one way or the other. And the treasure is down here. It only says you have to reveal the treasure room and kill all revealed enemies. So the other time that I played this, we just went this way. And so whatever enemies were in this room never appeared. Okay. Uh, so, and I kind of panicked. We didn't do enough damage to these living corpses. And I actually had to send someone back to, like, kill them before we ran out of cards. And I wasted a bunch of time moving here, moving back, moving here. So we'd like to avoid that this time. Now, right, Volatile Concoction is a top half. Okay. I mean, starting with a Toxic Bolt seems pretty reasonable. But I probably want to be, like, over... Mm, mm, here? And any good bottom halves here? We could shield up. Or no, I cut that, didn't I? No, it's here. Flamethrower is here. Yeah, I could do a, a fast Toxic Bolt plus Shield Up. And then have these guys try to move slowly. So that we benefit from the shield and then we can move out and attack. Alright, like if I use Withering Claw as my top half. To start getting effects on people. And then like... Bottom half. I have another attack lying around somewhere, right? I guess it's feed. No, it's the mine's weakness. Sure. And I think the Kragheart should try to deal with these guys somehow. But they're so slow. It's unlikely we're going to have to deal with them this turn. So. Could be a massive boulder, but oh, you know what would be nice is is actually setting up an avalanche to block things off so only one of them can attack at a time. And um, I feel kind of bad about taking out Earth and Claude, really. I'm looking for a top half card. Massive Boulder seems fine. It's the kind of thing that you like to use with backup ammo, but... Hmm. 
I'm not gonna have time to start back up ammo right away, I don't think. Okay. Attack three is a lot. And both of them are gonna get here, so the might these being attacked twice. Well, at least I appreciate the shields we're getting. Oof! Oh, thank goodness, we're wearing the helmet. Yeah, the living corpses are not moving much. Oh, you found a way to attack two people. Very clever. And is this difficult terrain or hazardous? It's, hello, get out of my face. Difficult, okay. So it's, I mean, not impossible for living corpses to draw a move to, but I think if they do, they can't attack. Um, so I'll have a warning if they try to come here and mess with me. I mean, I guess I could do this the other way and add plus two attack, but I don't, because this guy's already poisoned, it's slightly wasteful to do this, but I don't think that's going to convince me. Oh, you know, I do have the poison sword now that I look at it. But I want to be able to use the bottom half of mine's weakness, so all right. Pop an invisible here, but I think I'd rather just plan next turn to use into the night as my bottom action. modifier? Is that what happened? Yes. I infused three earth this turn. Very wasteful. Sort of. So I'm, I'm happy with these. I like this. This is a nice avalanche. Better than most I've gotten. Um... So what are we supposed to do against this guy? I could stun you, but you're like almost dead. I like healing the Mind Thief, clearly. Uh, which I guess I'd rather do this way. It wastes some healing, actually. Hmm. I was thinking Reinvigorating Elixir would be a nice... Uh, card to still have in hand to make someone recover a bunch of cards in the first shuffle, which is when it's most impactful. But it's also most impactful to the Tinkerer to burn it early, as I've mentioned every time I look at this card. So I don't know, let's just get rid of that, I guess. Actually, maybe instead of stun shot, I should just go for Enhancement Field and try to kill this guy. But then who's stunning you? Maybe it's just fine that you don't get stunned. So I said I wanted Into the Night this turn. Do I still? Oh, where's my... Uh, um, um, uh, um, submissive Affliction? So if I attack you, it would be for four? And then I also have some 
bottom half attack, don't I? Or is, did I use my only one? I don't remember how many I have. I know I used one. And I have this, which is a ranged stun I could use on him. That actually seems kind of nice. I know he's adjacent, so the ranged attack won't be effective. But it'll still, like, stun him. And it might do some damage. Let's get that Dirt Tornado going. We've got a nice thing here. Um... Bottom half, anything looking appealing? Yeah, I mean, I could I could put up some Retaliate, or I could Heaving Swing. Maybe that's even better. Yeah, see, the Living Corpses can't can't get to us this way. This this obstacle is blocking them. Whew, Living Bones. They have target three. Wow, okay, it's very important that I kill them, because otherwise they're attacking three on a single person three times, which is a lot. I mean, I guess if we rolled times two, this would be a kill as well. Plus two almost was. Okay, that's not bad. Let's just stun you, I guess. And actually, it says this is likely to kill. Why? I'm attacking for one. He has a shield which cancels it out, but the poison... Okay. Yeah, that's the disadvantage, though. Submissive Affliction is a good card here. I could pick it back up. But I don't think I will. Oh, I think I tried to play two top halves, didn't I? Again. Well, let's just Enhancement Field for a Attack? Does that make any... or for bottom half? And then use this to kill the skeleton instead of healing? Goggles would guarantee a kill, but... There's only... oh, there's three curses? Oh, I guess it wouldn't guarantee a kill. Okay, since there are four misses in the deck, I think it's worth using goggles here, just to make sure... No, this guy's stunned. If I miss, who cares? I missed. I don't know. It's a little spooky, but... We're gonna have a decent amount of attack to hit this guy with. It's possible we miss because of the disadvantage and uh, the four plus, you know, four times zeros. It would be a bummer. But I mean, this is attacking for four, so it has to be a zero to not kill. Okay, we got him. A full hexagon of attack four muddle is pretty cool. Picking anything back up, do you think? We'd like to do that this shuffle, maybe. I mean, Massive Boulder might be nice to have back. Because I don't really have a great... I don't know. There's plenty of good stuff I can do, I guess. It's just like it's burn cards, right? Explosive Punch. Opposing Strike, actually, 
Yeah, rumbling advance, opposing strike would be kind of fun. March in here, punch a bunch of dudes. It gets me surrounded by living... Oh, right, that doesn't work because they move up. Well, I'm not sure about this plan now. Uh, do I have a bottom half heal lying around? I do. So let's just try stabbing this guy. And how about all this? What, what do we do about these guys? Hmm. Hostile takeover for the immobilize is pretty funny. And then maybe just go invisible? Planning next time to scurry and stab? Where's my... My massive boulder, yes, okay. That's where it is, it's in the discard, very good. It could be time to turn on Opposing Strike as a bottom half, because I don't really want to go anywhere. And then maybe Crater to get these guys split up a little bit more. Seems okay. Now, you are attacking for some. One. If the Mind Thief is invisible, which he plans to be, you're only going to get to attack one person. So I don't think we need to be absolutely certain that you're killed. Oh, actually, does these immobilize do anything? Yeah, it does. So let's immobilize this elite, I guess. vanish. It would have been nice if the Tinkerer could go first, so I would know whether their attack is going to succeed in killing, but can't have everything, right? I'm still saving the goggles? I'm not sure what for, though, actually. I think this is the best chance to get some value out of them. Yeah. Turns out I didn't need him. Mm. Well, if I push you away, then we... Oh, I don't have any... Earth, so I'm not pushing. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Oh, well. Oh, I found some Earth.
and now, annoyingly, the, um, where did it go? The enhancement field that I was earlier, I don't know, enhancement field got fine value. It's just right now, a range three, attack three would be a nice way to finish that guy off. But I used it before to add damage to this guy's attack and to my attempt to kill the skeleton. It seems fine. Um, if we could just, like, pile some damage on these guys, we could leave. Right? We, when they're at three, like, they're, they're gonna, like, fall apart eventually, right? Good news, we've gained zero experience so far. Um, could stun this middle elite, I guess. I believe you are allowed to put traps indoors, so that's a thing I could do at some point if the Tinkerer is the last one out of the room. Let's just restorative mist to heal up a little bit more. Using this for the stun is pretty nice. Although I guess I should go slow and hope that the Cragheart can kill this guy. Or I suppose the Tinkerer. So that I can stun whoever walks up to me. Is the plan, I guess. Ooh, what about an explosive punch? Does a lot, huh? It's burning a card, but that's okay, I think. Not much I can do with the earth I generated last turn, it looks like. Unstable upheaval, I mean, that would, but I don't think that's very good right now. Um, I'll just take a rumbling advance so I can walk up to these guys and damage them. Yeah, see, this is why you can afford to, like, let them just fall apart, hopefully. On the other hand, it does mean I maybe don't want to walk adjacent to them, because they're attacking for an absolute truckload. So I think given what the Kraghart is planned, I should be attacking this guy here. Ooh, that's a nice damage roll. Maybe, maybe I can leave these two to the Mind Thief and just get going with everyone else. It seems a little scary. But I bet he can handle it. Plus, we can maybe take a pot shot at them on the way out. Volatile Concoction will be available next turn. That's kind of nice.
Oh, by stunning him, I made him not take damage. That's kind of funny. Because that's all he was going to do this turn, was suffer damage. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I did more damage than he was going to suffer with the stun attack, so it's not like I costed myself damage here. Um, just move here? I think? I don't really want to be adjacent to two of these guys for no reason. Don't really need this. So I was just thinking it'd be nice to town to booster the crag heart to buy him a little bit more time. And I can afford to hook gun, which will still hit this guy. Seems nice. He is stunned, so like hitting him is less good than hitting someone else. But I think it's still fine. I guess I'd rather move slowly, so... Well, no, not really. I think I want to shoot this guy at range to apply some ice. I'm, I'm using Scurry like as a move, too, I think. Oh, Empathetic Assault's top half is burned. Never mind. So maybe I'm scurrying in to attack and then retreating with Empathetic Assault or something? It seems alright. Now I can apply backup ammo. That's actually pretty cool. Move 1, attack 4. So... You're stunned, and also you're getting shot at? Yes. Wait, is Stamina Booster what I meant to play? No, I meant to play Volatile Concoction for the bottom half. The one that lets them recover a card without burning one of the Tinkerer's cards. Not the one that lets them recover a burned card. So that pick up a discarded card. And this to attack one of the zombies. You were playing these two, I think, quickly. I don't really recall. You were playing backup ammo and, like, just some junk. Oh. No, that's right. He was stunned. I Or immobilized? I don't remember. Stunned. Yes. I forgot that they, he was going to get to go before the Tinkerer. Turns out it's fine, though. Hey, we're almost done killing all revealed enemies. 
Unluckily, we can predict there will be more behind this door. Range 4. He doesn't really have much with that range, right? Earthen Clod was in the deck, but I took it out. Are we generating Earth this turn? No. So we won't have any next turn, probably. And the backup ammo is going to be wasted, huh? Sad. Well. I mean, I guess I'm taking Crater. It's the least wasted to use uh, on him in this situation, I think. try a long rest here it effectively recovers like 3 HP assuming he attacks me he'll probably attack for more than that so I would be losing HP I say 3 because the heal is 2 and this is 1 it's probably better to just short rest and Hit him with like a hostile takeover or something. Yeah. Oh, I like this one. But, I mean, there's plenty of stuff I like in the deck, right? Poison and Muddle is pretty fun. But I guess right now it's not that good, so maybe I should try to switch to the Mind's Weakness. Let's just burn something else. How bad could it be? Yeah, that's fine. So I have a ranged stun here on the bottom half. Ranged immobilize on the top half. Kind of wasted to use them both, but their damage that doesn't require me to backtrack is the idea, I think. shot oh we didn't need the Craghart's help after all <laughs> okay sure we'll be a little greedy here I'm a little bit further from the door, but I have one more experience. The Tinkerer needs the HP the most, I guess. your goggles and you don't really want to walk into the room so a long rest seems very reasonable you have used your leather armor twice and also your shield so I agree a long rest is good for you as well and I mean we're doing pretty well pace wise right Cragheart burned one attack card mind thief has burned a card by resting and is Kind of the one most likely to run out of cards soonest, I guess. Um, I 
I could always try the old scurry into the night trick, but I don't know. I can't do that because I can't scurry through the door because this is difficult terrain. I could feedback loop into the door, but then I can't go into the night. Well, let's say I don't want the frigid apparition, maybe. Oh, I have boots. I could have scurried into the night. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, I have the ability to gain XP out of this, but no one to attack, sadly. I feel like unstable up upheaval is not that good, but I'm probably wrong. So maybe toss heaving swing. I don't have a clear reason for that, it just seems reasonable. And you, that whole poison trap thing didn't really pan out. Maybe now we can get rid of flamethrower. I used the shield somewhat effectively last turn or last cycle, but it doesn't look like I'm going to mm, coming up. Okay, so I think into the night we scurry, right? And... I don't really have a clear idea of what to do with the Tinkerer. With the Kragheart, I assume we just want to like get closer to the combat. Toxic Bolt is usually good. But I'd like to act slowly so we can go after the Mind Thief. Obviously, I can see that this will go after the Mind Thief, but I'm supposed to pretend I don't know that, right? Um, maybe use Harmless Contraption for initiative and bonk the... Uh... Oh. Crack Hearts at full, huh? So is the Tinkerer? It's the only person who... <coughs> needs healing is the mind thief well in that case maybe I can just enhancement field and the Cragheart will also try to come in slowly and apply a dirt tornado to a bunch of dudes Skeletons and living spirits. I don't know why they call them like living X. It just seems oh, living bones, living spirit, living corpse. I don't know. Um, what are the skeletons doing? They're attacking but not moving. And the living spirits are moving and attacking at range. Oh, if only I had my fearsome blade still. What a beautiful set of traps to set off. Well, not doing that, I guess. I still have Withering Claw. Yeah, okay. Uh, I guess this one in front 
it's an elite, so it's a little bit harder to kill, maybe, for the people in back. Oh, and that accomplished Explorer, didn't it? Nice. Well, I was hoping enemies would be close enough to Toxic Bolt here. But they're not. So I guess I kind of have to move in. Which I guess is fine. It means I get to go closer. I don't get the, the enhancement field effect. But... I get to move closer in, which is its own reward. I had sort of hoped the enhancement field would be up so the crack heart could walk into it and get a bigger dirt tornado, but can't win them all. Dirt tornado's range is two. I'd like to move more than that then. Oh, I have Earth. Where did that come from? Did I make that last turn somehow? Oh, the massive... no? I played the massive boulder just now. Last turn, didn't I rest? Where is this Earth coming from? It's strong. It was created this turn. Oh, Toxic Bolt made Earth! How nice! That Elite's taken a decent chunkin'. I almost want to pick back up the Dirt Tornado again, right? Except there won't be any Earth, so it's going to be noticeably worse. Oh, and Massive Boulder's the other card I might want to play. I could pick that back up. Hang on, did I forget to use my backup ammo? I totally could have targeted this guy. Oh my god, I have to restart the round to do this again. We scurried into the night, we used Toxic Enhancement, and Dirty Boulder. <laughs> there you go, that's a mnemonic for you. Toxic Enhancement, but not in that order. Into the Night and Scurry, and Boulder and Dirt. Yes, I remember. Skip Movement. No, we attacked the Elite, right? Because it has more health and we wanted to poison it. Although I guess we're poisoning both of them, so it doesn't make that big a difference. Although, I'm not actually sure I could use the extra target for anything. Range 2 is quite limiting. Maybe, maybe he could move further? Not really. 
Yeah, I think actually that restart was pointless because... Like, for example, I could go here and I could ha I could move the hex to just muddle, to like muddle these three, right? And then, but, but I don't have the range to include him in the, uh, as an extra target because it's only range two. I can target him with the Dirt Tornado because, here, well, I'll show you. The way that targeting of multi-hex things works is, you know, I have range two. How come I'm allowed to target this space, which is three squares away, right? The answer is you aren't targeting that space. You're targeting this one, but you don't have to target with the center. I can say, I want to target this hex here at this space. And the effect is to have a hex centered here, basically. But then when I add someone, like I, I can't add Maybe I can? Can I attack this guy twice? It looks like that might be what I'm doing. I think it's probably not, though. So I can I can do this. Consume Earth. Attack here. And it says choose another target. Can I, I can't pick this guy, right? I mean, I have picked him. No, I've unaimed the main attack, I see. Yeah, and I just can't, I can't reach anybody. I guess I could have used Massive Boulder for targeting instead. But I don't think I want to do that. That would hurt the Mind Thief quite a bit. Okay, so that whole restart was pointless, but... Uh, well, there's not really an end to that, but I thought for a moment it was useful. Um... Now, this turn coming up, the Massive Boulder will be quite nice to do a bunch of damage to these guys. So I will pop the Stamina Potion to pick it up. I could have used it here, I suppose, to attack this guy. But, I don't know, muddling all this seemed nice. How much more um, ammo do I have? Three ammos. Very good. Let's play the Crag Card's turn first. He wants a boulder and he wants to move fast. Do I have a jump? I think it's only Crater, right? No. Rock Tunnel jumps. I mentioned that because I want to be able to get to a spot where I can target two of these guys. Um, which means they'd have to be like over here. And I want to save Crater for like pushing people into this trap, I think, if possible. So I, I think Rock Tunnel to get like over here. Or one, two, three, four, five. The other side of the traps, let's say, to here is nice. It means I'm not... Actually, maybe I just want to stand here and let them hit me, right? They're muddled. I have retaliate. Seems great. Okay. Mind Thief's invisible, so let's just play these, but slowly. And... If possible, it would be nice to use... Reinvigorating Elixir on the Mind Thief, who's running a little low on cards in hand. They're obviously about to be out of cards in hand. But the Crag Heart is actually the one more likely to run out of M, not ammo, but uh, gas. Run out of steam as they're burning more and more cards here. And right now, like, the Crag Heart doesn't need to pick back up discarded cards, so I think I'll try and wait on Invigorating Elixir. Um, what can I do that's useful? I 
I could consider maybe a volatile concoction and try to draw a guy onto it. Not sure how great that is. Stun shot's usually fine. I'm going to try putting down a trap. It should be fun. Just make sure I save hook gun for next turn. And I guess play like... Ink Bomb for a modest move. I don't know. I think I basically just want Harmless Contrap. No, I don't know. I, I want... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have several move fours, right? What I don't have is a bunch of bottom half heals. Okay. I guess that's the plan. The skeletons are moving fast and shielding up, huh? Okay. And the living spirits... Unfortunately, there's no ice to spend. And perhaps the Kragheart can just kill. I mean, I think the Kragheart is somewhat likely to kill all of them. Right? That's why this was such a cool play. I think I am going to go here, though, just to get over the trap. Standing next to these guys, I don't know. It would be nice, but, like, the traps are kind of a problem. And this is a way to get past them. So a minus one means that guy's not dying. Times zero means that guy's not dying. But plus zero would have been a kill, basically, right? Because they would take one damage from the boulder hitting them and one damage from the boulder hitting their ally. The one guy we didn't target was guaranteed to die. Their armor worked well there. Um, is this guy not poisoned? Oh, he healed. I see. I see. I see. Um, Nope, I don't need this because I'm always attacking with Muddle and stuff. Look at all those status effects. Yum, 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 yum. I don't think I need a potion or a cloak. You know, this is probably as good a turn for Cloak as any. Just Cloak up, long rest next turn, and... And then something? I don't know. Uh, well... Maybe I can just enjoy picking this up. And the boots will let me get over the trap in the future. Or I could just obviously go through this guy. 
Also, I suppose I could attack him now and hope to kill him, but I like the idea of this poison trap. For the hook gun kill next turn. Ah! And like a restorative mist is my bottom half. Or I could play Harmless Contraption to heal more at range, but I want something fast. Okay, Unstable Upheaval just... No, Rumbling Advance is the card that just kills both of these guys, right? That's nice. And maybe I'll just Avalanche... Nope, that doesn't do something. I'll Crater. To attack these guys as well. Cool. Good looking turn. <sighs> okay, they're healing back up. Again. quite work out the way I wanted to, I think, but the Tinkerer could move here and then hook gun one of these guys across both traps for six damage. So even if the hook gun does zero, which is likely, it would still be a kill. Um, and it would get the trap out of the Mind Thief's way, which is all very lovely. The problem with that is that then the Cragheart can't really rumbling advance to this space anymore. Like, his boots are used up, aren't they? Craghart, boots, used up. Yeah. So he could rumbling advance to here, killing this one, and then crater the other one, and it probably kills him, right? So that's, that's not an unreasonable line, I think. Oh, no, yeah, I want to move here. I was like, is there some reason moving here would be cool? No, there's not. I couldn't hook on the guy into the traps anymore. And I guess if I'm going to guaranteed kill exactly one of these guys, it would be sort of nice... If it were the elite, right? Except the elite is the one who's currently next to the mind thief and therefore is most susceptible to sudden death. Let's kill this one, I guess. Wait, I have... Oh my god, I have... Well, I don't need extra targets, do I? Because this is just a kill still. So I'm not going to rewind that, because I didn't need to attack this guy anyway. Let's get rid of... Feedback loop, I guess? And the Mind Thief can do just a similar thing where they... Um, well, I want to play Mind's Weakness, Submissive Affliction, but these are both rather slow. He might get an attack in if I did that. 
which I'd rather avoid. There's Earth available. I don't know, I guess I'll just play these. Why am I doing this? Making Am I making obstacles? I don't know. Oh, a stun shot is nice. So now he won't be able to act. Very good. And then I can elixir... nope. Yes. I can elixir the crag heart, because, but the crag heart will have to move to be adjacent to me before I can do that. That seems fine. He is acting before me, so it's a good thing that I will be stunning him. certainly use the goggles. I don't think I need to use the bow here. It's probably the last time the bow is going to be good, though. I might as well. Just in case things go badly for the Mind Thief. Although, like, how could they? Let's just assume I'll get some... Yeah, there'll probably be Living Spirits or Bones in here. Although I seem to recall it was mostly Living Corpses. There you go. The first piece of experience for the Tinkerer. Finally doing an actual good job on my combat goals, battle goals. So this, like, has to be a kill, right? Obviously not that, but this. Oh, he's disarming, too. A miss! Oh, that's pretty rude. I could pick back up the affliction. I think this is as good a time as any to do it. This guy's gonna maybe die eventually, but remember the living bones, they have heal, which gets rid of the wounds, so... Can't guarantee it. Let's just make sure we get the kill here with something fast. I'll just take this one. And I think while we wait for everybody, I might just... Uh, do I not have the thing that destroys obstacles anymore? I guess I don't. Yeah, no more grinding experience by putting down obstacles and then breaking them. Uh, let's head towards the door. Oh, the Mind Thief... Hmm. Doesn't have any big moves left. It's going to be tough for them to get to the next room, actually. Oh, well. Actually, they don't have to act fast here, it occurs to me. Right? This guy's disarmed. I guess he might heal, though, which would stink a lot. So I, I still don't really see any bottom halves that do anything. So I'll just take this one. Generate some experience before I kill him? No, I want to walk away. I don't know, one experience is probably worth more than one move. I don't think we need a lot of help to finish this scenario with just these two.
Everyone's at full, huh? Okay. Oh, you need a second card. Right, I was going to just put down some obstacles for fun. I guess I'll just rumbling advance so I can walk over here and generate some earth while I'm doing it. Next turn I get a decent dirt tornado in the main in the in the next room. What do I want to spend with that as my top half? I could crater this guy just for fun, I guess. Just in case that's necessary. It probably won't be. Probably won't even work. Let's just upheaval instead. Spend that card, which doesn't ever do anything. Because presumably the Mind Thief is killing this guy. Oh, I did say that... <clears throat> that uh, I don't think I need one move. <laughs> Alright, fine. Well, this should super duper kill. Look at all this damage. Damage seven. After the shield. No misses. Thank you. <clears throat> Pretty cool stuff. I feel like the Kragheart could almost solo this room with like his Retaliate and a couple of remaining burn cards. But it's also not really necessary. Um, no one needs this, right? Yeah. And I didn't pick a big move for some reason. Uh, well, because these are basically my only cards. Fair enough. Uh, let's grab some gold. Uh, picking up a card right now buys me a turn, but I don't really think I need a turn exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Stunshot's kind of good right now, I guess. Sure, let's let's just take that. I'm sure it'll be fine. Or actually, Toxic Bolt. Yeah, Poison's probably better than Stun here. That's how I like to start combats, poisoning them. Move slowly, though, so that the Crag Heart has a chance to open the door first. It is quite tempting to walk here and pick up all the, get the money instead of um, <clears throat> <clears throat> instead of trying to actually get over the obstacle. Yeah. Let's just see how well these two do on their own. Get some more gold. I'll try to go slowly with that plan, so that just in case I can change my mind. I actually can't go after the credit card this way. Mm. Okay, I think it's pretty important to open the door as fast as I can. Even though Crater is kind of a better card to have next turn than Avalanche is, maybe. Give me that loot. No, that doesn't work! It's a top half action! Oh my god. I was supposed to play this bottom half. This top half. Oh, so I didn't need the Scurry. Okay, well... 
So restart round here. These two played Crater. I mean, I don't have any new information, so I guess I can just do whatever I want. But I need to play anything and into the night, right? <clears throat> which means I can save Scurry for next turn, which is nice. And together with Scurry, I guess I want Hostile Takeover because it's ranged. I, I got confused. I thought the loot was bottom half because mm, a lot of loot actions are I mean I guess you could actually burn crater if you wanted to it, you might get lucky and damage somebody but this is good enough so what's going on in this room We'll find out shortly after these messages. Okay, so there's some of everything, I guess. And the Dirt Tornado is not as good as I had hoped. Living Spirit, what does Muddle do? Does it... End of its next turn, so... This guy will become unmuddled just by cursing us, so muddling him doesn't help. How about muddling you? Here, hello? Oh, that's a living spirit also? I thought it was a skeleton. I see. So I guess I'll hit this guy where there's a bigger chance I might accidentally do some damage. Hey, we infused more earth for next turn. That's kind of nice. Didn't do any damage, though. It's not great. I don't see it saying we're infusing Earth. Well, it says that here, but I don't see it here. Ah, okay. Kind of weird. Usually the stuff that you're creating in a turn shows up here in like a blinking ball saying this is being created, but it's not created yet. He's being heavily cursed, by the way. Look at all this gold down here. Oh, of course, this is what the bow is for. Um, sure, let's hit that one. Ooh. Where are my goggles? I used them for something back here. I don't recall the details. Maybe knowing that that was a possibility, I should have not used the bow there and waited till I had long rested to get back the goggles. I don't know about that, but it could be reasonable. I mean, massive boulders obviously great here. Kind of wish I could do it a little faster. Oh, 
I think a short rest is appropriate. There's no need to squeeze out value. I'm missing the goggles, but I'd rather have like a turn of attacking than the goggles, right? What do we have? Could Toxic Bolt again. I think Stun Shot's pretty good though. Oof, I mean... Ink Bomb is great. Right? The danger is that... Uh... Oh, that's what I should have used the bow on, probably. Well, I figured the Cry Cart could handle these guys, and I still think he can. And this way we don't have to get generate any experience. <laughs> Uh... Yeah, I guess that's a turn. Crackheart's so slow. Did he have to be this slow? I can't see the cards he played. Yeah, he did. Okay. That guy's attacking for sort of a lot. I'd rather he didn't. Yeah. Also, I don't want him to move from where he currently is. The other two aren't moving because they already have a good attack. But this guy wanted to back up to get a move in. require a little bit of patching up to get him back to full health. I'm out of backup ammo? Oh no! Wait, did I forget to use it last round? Could I have dirt tornadoed a little better and added some ammo? I don't know, maybe. Sad. I don't want obstacles here, I don't think. I just want to get into the room. I mean, it seems very rude not to use the net shooter at this point. It is only attack 3, though, so, like, odds are it kills this guy and neither of these? That's not as good as I would hope. If I had the entanglement field still, and I could pick it up with a short rest, but that feels bad. Oh, it's supposed to be Ink Bomb, I guess. That's even more damage. Yeah. That's worth taking on 3 experience, I guess. Haha. Uh -huh. Um, and just play Net Shooter as my initiative card to go fast, so they can't get out of my way. I don't have any equipment to refresh, I guess I'll just short rest. Mm, it's kind of a nice card, but it's not that important, I don't think. Actually, what's the Cry Cart doing? He's short resting as well, I assume. Mm hmm. He could go for a long rest, actually. No, a boulder to clean these guys up is quite valuable. Sure. Like, 
that. I guess I want to move sort of slowly here. Like that? Move two, attack two, so they can reach this square. But I'm moving first. I can go here, and then he could reach me on one of these squares. It's not the end of the world. Okay, let's get that ink bomb. Good work, little dude. I don't really want to get into this guy's range. But also, I kind of do. Yeah, I don't want him attacking the crag card, in fact. Well, he's not going to, really. Oh, wait, what? Oh, this is right. Yeah, that's targeting anything, which doesn't matter. I can get to here. Which means I'm getting attacked. I don't see any reason to do that, actually. The Mind Thief doesn't have enough moot. No, the Mind Thief has boot. Yeah, I think we can stand here. Uh, well, hmm. Now that these guys are all dead, I suddenly don't believe that the Cragheart needs to cooperate at all with the uh, collective here. He's just going to heal up for his own nefarious personal reasons. And, uh, maybe pick up this gold. Could pick up the treasure chest, then this guy gets to attack me, which I'd rather avoid. Not a big deal, obviously. I'm, but, uh, we can always loot this later, right? Oh, he attacked me anyway, I'm stupid. Well, I did that on purpose for the retaliate, obviously. And I guess switching into damage mode here is fine. Oh, turns out wrong. At least I got the poison on. I could. I think I'm gonna spend the top half of uns, unstable upheaval, upheaval here as a the actual burn, right, to attack both of them. Although the funny thing is, like, the bottom half of Crater spends the Earth pretty well, yeah. So I don't need to spend the Earth on unstable unstable upheaval, right? I just get to attack for like three and also make everybody suffer. This guy suffers two, this guy suffers one. Yeah, so it's like four here, five here. No, four to each because this guy's poison. He takes one less damage from the suffer, but he's poisoned, so he takes one more from the attack.
I guess this guy's taking five. This guy's also taking five. Okay. So we want to make sure we can heal up the Kragheart, though, right? That's a pretty good one. You know, let's just have both heals ready. We probably aren't finishing the scenario this turn, and we should be able to avoid it in case we accidentally do. Um, and I'll include Scurry as one of my cards, so that if, if we accidentally do win the scenario, I can still get to the treasure chest. I, it's not asking me to consume the earth yet, because I haven't gotten to the part that says you can consume earth. Okay. That's how far I want to move, just one. So they're not going to die of retaliation. Wait, what? Oh, yes, yeah, skip harming adjacent allies because there are none. Sure. But this guy will die of retaliation if I let him. On the other hand, I don't want to do so much damage to the Kragheart that we can't heal it with six heal. And I think if I let them both attack... Oh, he has seven, not one. Never mind. Uh, no. Well, I can't attack then move, which is what I want Scurry to do. I guess I'll just stun this guy. Wait, how much help? Oh no, it's it's the mind thief at seven. This guy is at one. Okay. Got it. Uh, so I guess I'm going to attack him here before I scurry onto the treasure in, in case we accidentally win. I can't scurry onto the treasure. I thought I had... I thought that was enough move to get there. It was when I was using this bottom half for move. Okay. It doesn't matter. This guy's not dying, so it's fine. Prag card is at seven, so we do need both of these heals. I'm not sure how in a party you would convince the uh, the tinker to apply a million heals to you um, without betraying your secret battle goal. So here, I think we want... I have a loot too around here somewhere, right? Perverse Edge or something? Or no, bottom half of Scurry. So that'd be kind of nice, right? So I'm just going to short rest here. Sure. Kragheart, almost dead, funnily enough. Um, I guess we just short rest, though. Burn that, because I don't want to take damage. Rumbling advance is a kill. So we don't really... We, we just need to make sure this guy doesn't act right. So let's short rest here and pick up my stun gun, which is the way to guarantee he doesn't act. Unless he goes very fast, which is possible. These guys do have low initiative cards in their deck, just not very many. I guess in case he does, 
instead of trying to get my initiative as low as possible, I should look for a big heal. Stamina booster is the biggest I have, right? I can't do it and stun shot, but I never need to do both of them. Either I can stun him or I can't, in which case I need to heal. Pretty fast, but not fast enough, I hope I'm fairly sure. Yeah, right, I said I have a guaranteed kill. Got him? These are all just three gold, right? A little hard to tell with these mouse over things. Get, that area gets pretty cluttered, but... Oh, no, there is zero gold there. Let's not move to that space. Because the Mind Thief was already there, I remember. Looks like a, we, we got a pretty clean quest here, huh? Lo second skin. That might be nice. Maybe for the Tinkerer who... Uh... So second skin is armor that removes minus ones from your deck, but doesn't do anything else during combat. Um... And the Tinkerer got this Curse of the Puppy, I guess, that reduces... <laughs> That adds minus one to their deck permanently, as far as I can tell. So we now have two people telling us to kill Jexera. We could go do that. Seems like a fun thing to do. We learned she's a necromancer. Which, in some sense, like, I don't know, Gloomhaven, I think, is... It's not a Dungeons & Dragons property, right? Like, Wizards of the Coast did not make it. But it, it draws, you know, heavy influences from Dungeons and & Dungeons and Dragons. Um... And, you know, what do you use giant diamonds for? Like, mostly resurrection, I think. But that's a cleric thing, isn't it? You wouldn't expect a necromancer to need a giant diamond. I don't know. Anyway, once again, Craghart carrying the day somehow. I don't quite understand how. And he almost ran out of cards, but we paced it outright so that he didn't, and everybody got their battle golds. Nice. I think everybody should have leveled, right? They were all very close. Uh, before we started the mission. The Tinkerer got very little experience, but there's like experience reward for finishing the quest, so... Yep, looks like everyone leveled. And the Tinkerer is going to have two perks to spend, because they get one from leveling and they got one from perk points, apparently. So, yeah, there's there's a bunch of minus ones in the deck. I don't 
know if this is the normal amount. I think it is. I think the three that were added were temporary. I guess, which makes, which is what I expected. But it was really weird that it says add them to your, I'm gonna have to look up that, that scenario or that encounter and see what the deal is with it. So I think it is temporary. You should start with the same number of pluses and minuses, and we, that's what we have now, and we haven't removed any minuses. So yeah, I, I guess they're gone, but it was very weird, just the way it was phrased. We'll do our leveling up this, this uh, episode, I guess, as we have done in the past. Um, I mean, immobilize is nice. I really like wounding enemies. Because it's, it's one of the more predictable ways to do damage. Once the wound is on there, you just like, no, they're going to take one. Nothing they can do to stop it. Um, you know, they can draw a heal, but like, if they're at one, they're going to die from the wound, even if they draw a heal. And if they don't draw a heal, then like, if they're at two or higher, they're going to die within two turns, right? You know, or two or, two or less. Um, I do like getting rid of all the minus ones. I'm not sure that's what I should do. Let's have a look at your new second skin thing. Yeah. We could replace the cloak. Um, which I don't think, did we even use it this last? I think we did. Yeah. I don't remember when we used it, but it's, it's a nice combo, like not combo, a, a supplement, let's say, to Into the Night. Another way to become invisible. Maybe I should look at my new uh, level up cards before I decide on a on a perk, huh? Brain leech, a nice big burn attack and heal that has a bottom half attack. These like these bottom half small attacks are they obviously fit into the mind thief's theme of like augmenting yourself so that your attacks are better. This lets you attack multiple times in a turn. But they're they're hard to use because you don't want to end your turn next to a bunch of enemies, really. And if you do, you don't usually want to spend two actions attacking, right? So it's, it's a little bit tricky. Like you wanna put feedback loop on so that you when, the, when you attack twice, you gain two shield and then you're like kind of fine being next to a bunch of enemies. Anyway, the other one is just a better augment. The augment is a better version of parasitic influence, right? It attacks for one more. Oh, interesting. Your melee attacks gain range too? Does that mean that if you attack while in melee with someone while this is up, you'll get you'll be at a disadvantage? It might. Huh. And I assume it means you heal yourself? Oh no, I see. I see, I see. This does not... Uh, this doesn't add range 2 to your melee attack in the same way that it doesn't add heal 2 to your melee attack. It says when you melee attack... It's, it's just like, instead of heal 2 self, it's heal 2 range 2. Okay, so yourself or someone else. Um, and also it's a bigger attack. Wow, push two all adjacent enemies. That's certainly a way to get out of having been surrounded, where I was just saying being surrounded is a thing the Mind Thief some sometimes likes somehow, despite being very squishy. Interesting. I mean, Brain Leech seems more straightforward, and Strengthen is a pretty cool effect. I guess I'll take it. We'll deck build tomorrow, but for now, I'm just gonna put. I, I will. I'll, I'll do the level ups, and I'll deck build when we have a new quest. I guess. Um, generating ice is not so bad. I have a few ways to consume it, right? Frigid apparition, and there's another one somewhere, isn't there? No. I have a few ways to produce it and only one way to consume it. Okay, so we probably don't want to take that. Mm. 
Add three muddle cards. Wow, that is a lot. I have one right now. Where did I get that? For my disarm and muddle, I see. I, I, I mean, I think I should be cutting out parasitic... What is it called? The Withering Claw? Because... Like, I have my equipment that adds poison, and I have my deck that adds muddle. This is just, like, sort of... It's nice to add a bunch of status effects to people, but it overlaps with other ways to apply effects. So, I could, like, put this... a bunch more muddling in. Yeah, sure, why not? The why not is because like I'm not taking consistency, which I love. I love getting rid of minus ones. But here, I think adding rolling muddles is pretty good. Craigheart, what do you have coming up? Clear the way. Move. Ah, I see. You like throw a rock at somebody and then it blows up. Okay, so that's a way to make avalanche better makes it easier to use the obstacles okay and then the bottom half is a big jumping move that creates experience blunt force attack four spend earth to make it attack eight wow uh and a reusable retaliate effect. I mean, they both seem pretty good, actually. I'll take clear the way for now. Wait, you don't have another... No, okay. Um, I'm a little tempted to add more earth. I don't think that's very good. Um, but like his, his attacks are so much better with earth, right? I think the other choice is to focus maybe. I don't know. I think just having earth like all the time seems great. Oh, you're supposed to level up first. Disarm a trap. Oh, huh. It's kind of, uh, I don't know. The, the scoundrel has one called, I think, Thieves' Knack. I thought briefly it was called Thieves' Tools. And I was like, oh, this is a like direct reference to that card. It's similar, but... Okay, or bottom half, create a stun trap. I have a lot of trouble getting them to hit traps. And it's like... Uh, I don't know. It requires something like hook gun to activate it and then you're spending like your whole turn on doing some damage to someone and stunning them when we already have stun shot to stun someone as just a top half but i mean okay stunning them and getting them adjacent to the rest of the party could be pretty cool uh crank bow top half huge attack bottom half big move i think i'll just take the crank bow two perks very exciting uh, I have, I've taken a wound already. Pretty tempting to just take another. And maybe a consistency. So I can see those wounds more often. Yeah, I guess that'll do. Pretty successful mission, quest, scenario. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.